personality changes. So, so someday we'll be able to book our Bowen Ferry? Is that, that is an option, but okay. that's not what BC Ferries is planning on doing without Bowen wanting. Okay. So with the new website comes infrastructure to do something like that. At least on the I think we're, we're, now, we're now recording, so let's actually the start hook. the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Without the banter, we'll, talk, we'll continue that later. Okay, uh, I we have quorum now, so this is good. So let's. Um, bring me was there? I missed the late item. Did was the agenda or the, were the minutes sent out from the last? Meeting? I'm sorry, everybody. It's oh, okay. Hi. It's okay. It's okay. Um, we're starting. <laughs> Minutes are not done yet. Okay, that's okay. So approval of the agenda. Has everybody taken a look at the agenda and no new additions? I have nothing. Of everything? Okay, so recommend that the uh, Transportation Advisory Committee approve the agenda. Do we have all in favor? Mm. Aye. Aye. All opposed? No. Awesome. Okay, so adoption of the minutes will do that. Um, this is just a short meeting to uh, have our one agenda item basically put through. So um, let's do that. Let's go to um, Emma with the 2021 transportation work plan. Hopefully everybody's mm -hmm. had a chance to kind of take a look at that. Um, and we can go on. Emma, did you want to Sure. Um, I'll just make a couple quick comments and if anyone has questions, we can dive right into them after. Mm -hmm. um, in this work plan, based on discussion from the last TAC meeting, I've removed the cycling ele um, element, which was uh, improvements for the cycling network of $5,000. So that is out. Uh, we did discuss possibly using that towards the Seven Hills improvements, um, but uh, I did the detailed budget as David had requested and the recommended improvements did seem to fit quite neatly into the $25,000 budget with um, two modifications to the uh, recommendations. One was um, the, what was the main one? Um, the realignment of the pedestrian crossing at Killarney Creek. Um, I don't know if you guys can visualize that um kind of at the bend almost yep. uh, and it's a really awkward uh it's not 90 degrees to the road the, the pedestrian crossing is like super slanted super skewed so the big recommendation was to realign that um, but there's a hydro pole in the way probably why it was so skewed um so that we are not touching because hydro poles are really expensive and also there will be quite a bit of earthworks to move the trails on both sides so they line up more square with the road. Um, that area is also slated for a culvert replacement that was supposed to happen this year, but it is now being postponed. Um, so we might consider that realignment if we have to dig up the road for the culvert replacement. But right now we're not touching it. So that's uh, a big chunk of money that we don't need to look at. And then the other modification, um, there was a recommendation for a pedestrian crossing near Snug Cove House. So it's a pretty new one. I don't know if you guys have seen it or know which one I'm talking about, but it's pretty much where Snug Cove House is. And then it crosses Miller and um, lands on that grassy boulevard that's between the trail and the road. The only thing is that boulevard in that section is quite steep and covered in grass and rocks. So it's not the most accessible connection between the crossing and getting to the trail for a pedestrian. So the recommendation was to put in a set of stairs and stairs are expensive to build and maintain. So with discussion um, with the uh, park staff, uh, we're looking at putting in a trail. So one that's not directly down, but kind of sloped uh, a little more on an angle for a gentler grade, way cheaper. And with that, it all fits into the $25,000 budget. The main cost really is relocating that center line as we've discussed. So all of these improvements were detailed in the report that was shared with TAC earlier this year. If any of you have questions about the details, you could let me know or ask right now or we can go offline, doesn't matter. Um, 
And uh, I guess another comment I want to make, um, one of the things that came out of the school travel plan, um, they had a list of action items for the municipality to consider and council had referred those actions to be incorporated into our annual work plans. So mm -hmm. I've made a table and I've tried to show exactly how that was done this year. And um, a couple things that we didn't do because we deferred the cycling element, they had asked about the bike and ride, which we had talked about last time. That's where it came from. I was trying to remember why I had bike and ride as a suggestion. Um, but general cycling improvements doesn't necessarily have to be a bike and ride, um, but we're, we're not doing that this year and um, that's okay. I don't think it's super high priority. Um, but the other item they had in there was to improve wayfinding of our trail system. So this is not just roads, not just the multi-use path, but a lot of the trails that people do use to get around the island. And we really, we have absolutely no wayfinding right now. So that isn't a recurring issue that seems to come up. And I've put in a little uh, highlighted section in the report in case TAC might want to consider recommending to council to refer that particular recommendation to the Parks, Trails and Greenways Advisory Committee for consideration. Um, other than that, all of the school travel planning suggestions have been incorporated. So I think that's, that's pretty good. We've covered most of what they would like us to do. Um, and then, oh, as an aside, not from not to do with the work plan, but just carrying out the um, this year's work plan, an update on the traffic calming policy, because I know you guys are all dying to know about that. <laughs> it's part of our speed management program. We have the speed bylaw that was just adopted, just to let everyone know. Um, so now all of our all of our speed limits are established and legally enforceable. Yay. And building on that, um, staff is going to be bringing a traffic calming policy to uh, council in end of October. So not the next meeting, but hopefully the meeting after that. And it will set out a process for evaluating speed, speed requests. Um, there'll be an initiation phase uh, with the residents having a certain number of residents come together and petition for, for this traffic calming. And then there will be an evaluation criteria. There needs to be so many people speeding um, and so many cars that are speeding. At, yeah, so threshold limits, technical stuff, and then various measures that address specific problems. Um, and then also consultation on community support for, for those types of measures to be installed and then a, a budgeting approval and implementation. Um, so setting out that process in the policy, just to let everyone know, uh, that was based on a lot of the research uh, consulted over, consulted nine sources of um, data and studies to, to find effective measures for rural areas that are applicable to Bowen Roads, narrowed down over 70 different measures to 13 that seemed to be good for Bowen. Um, we got some public feedback, not tons. We got almost 40 votes, upvotes and downvotes. So the most popular, just for everyone's information, was reallocation of road space, taking some of the vehicle travel lanes and moving it for, say, pedestrians and cyclists. So same pavement, no new infrastructure, but just moving that line painting, nice low-cost method, was definitely the most popular. And then things like lateral shifts, horizontal deflections, um, things that make cars have to kind of move across uh, the roadway a bit to slow down uh, was also very popular. Um, so I'm gonna put all of that together. There'll be a matrix of appropriate measures for specific speeding issues. And, um, and I've reviewed 11 different municipalities and how they do traffic calming. A lot of them are local, some of them are across Canada. Um, so I think, I think the, the policy will be pretty comprehensive um, and I'll, I'll try and send it out just by email instead of another meeting if you guys want to make some comments before I bring it to council end of October. That's it. I, I have a question about the, um, the student transportation plan. I was mm -hmm. wondering about, it was the part where there was the channelized right turn in front of Bix, mm -hmm. was the plan we're talking about removing that? Um, not necessarily, but it uh, presents some safety issues. Yeah, 
I'm just because I'm just so, curious about how the ferry traffic because that's sort of like the turnaround for ferry traffic. So if, ah, if that mm -hmm. wasn't um, hold on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what happens? Ah, British Columbia is calling me. Um. Anyways, thank you. Um. If we don't have that, right? How will people turn around to get into the, you know, into the ferry lineup and stuff? Yeah. Same. Same question Sorry. we have. <laughs> So it's been flagged as a safety issue, that whole intersection geometry and how, how it operates right now and buses park there and students load and unload. It's congested at pickup drop off time and then there's very turnaround for ferry marshaling. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's been flagged. There's obviously no set mm -hmm. plans. Um, I think it will definitely be a, a future project to, to have a proper engineering study done and a, a design done and then consultation. But at this point, nothing. It was, I, I it's was just, just, it's just like, been flagged. That one just sort of, God was like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> it's, it's true though, it is quite the busy intersection for sure, so. Mm -hmm. Did anybody else have any comments or? I do. Questions? Um, I just like to go through so I'm in the 2021, the attachment to the 2021 mm -hmm. work plan. So I, I, I liked your... Um, um, I can and, share a screen if you want, David. And that's okay, everybody can see, I guess, or yeah, I guess somebody could slap it up or I could, I suppose. Are you saying... Um, I, I, I have it up if you want me to. Sure, that's good. Sure. Can everyone see that? Yep. yep. So I think since, so this will be, when we go to council, this will be attached. Is that how we do it, Emma? This will be the work plan. This will be the work plan. That's what council will see. So we need to be able to justify yeah. every one of these little things. And yeah. we'll skip over the multi-use path, um, the pedestrian network, that's the uh, Seven Hills. So that's great, Miller Road. Um, mm -hmm. So the speed management and so the, the two columns, budget and funding. If the funding is potential funding, from somebody else. is that yeah. what that means? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so working down. So you've talked about the speed management, um, the footpath lighting. Mm -hmm. Where will that be, and how will we do that? Um, so this this was a, a project. That came out of this was actually your idea, David. I know, I know. Yeah, about three years ago. <laughs> yeah, it was a while ago. Um, this was because we have a lot of footpaths and absolutely no lighting across the island. We have no municipal lighting, um, so there's a lot of really dark footpaths, especially in the winter. And the idea was to get some simple motion sensored lighting that uh, would be night sky compliant um, and have them installed, solar powered, whatnot in really problematic areas uh, in collaboration with the community. So it would be a, a, a resident that would request the light. Okay. So we would pay for the light, but but the request would come from the community and um, they would help like get some support and um, right. like, monitor right. the usage and stuff like that and help with installation. Yeah. No, so the 5,000 yeah. was to get an inventory of these types of lights. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I, I was very keen on these lights back about three or four years ago when we when we did this. Um, a lot of them have kind of broken down over the years, oh, and so I'm, okay. I'm less keen on them. Um, and for solar, the trouble is going through the forest. You're not going to be able to get any, you know, you're, you're not going to get any decent solar. Um, okay. So it's a bit problematic, I think. Anyway, it's a decent idea. Um, I think, for example, going from the the ferry terminal up through the park to a couple of those park that parking lot yeah. um, you know that's pretty dark uh, in the winter and it's a place where lots of people are walking but anyway mm -hmm. um sure so I, i'm okay with that um keeping going down um i think yeah the park and ride incentives i thought that was interesting like we have we haven't talked about what the incentives could be um mm -hmm. and you've managed to get 
all that funding from TransLink? Have we actually it's got potential that? funding? Um, and every that? year it's their travel smart funding for travel demand management. And this is exactly the kind of stuff they want to encourage Ms. Pallies to do. So every year they've approached me to ask if we have any park and ride incentives that they can pay for. And every year I'm like, well, it's in our transportation plan actually, but uh, we don't, we're not set. Whoops, we just lost you. Yeah. Yeah, she's frozen. She's frozen. Okay, I'll. Was that, was that the park and, was that the park and bike? Or was that no, the park, it was park and, and ride? Park and ride. Like, park and bus just, ride. Yeah, something we could do, for example, uh, we've got that park and ride, you know, at the, uh, at the number two fire hall. And, mm -hmm. you know, we've had about one car use it in a couple of years. And, and you can see kind of why, because you drive there, you park, and then you got to pay a couple of whatever you have to pay now, 250 or three bucks, you know, to go for 10 minutes across the island. I guess what an incentive could be is, okay, if you park there, you get a free ride. And, you know, $1,000 would cover a lot of free rides. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's one way to just do an incentive do it for a while and people get used to doing it and maybe it'll work. I don't know. But so I think it's a decent idea. But we really still have lost Emma, haven't we? Mm -hmm. And we've lost her screen share as well. You're not going to get a recommendation for Castle if she does come back. <laughs> I've got no request. She's not knocking at the door, which is all the way out my end. So I like that idea, David. Yeah. I do too, because otherwise you're not going to get any park and ride until parking becomes a challenge in the cove. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And this is everybody a way to... Loves, everybody loves the word free. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I think that is, I think it's a great idea. I think a lot of people might use it. And if, as long as it has funding, though, I think people will get angry if there's... Yeah. If it was only up to $1,000 and then it, it ran out. Yeah. yeah. No. Oh, now we got to pay. And it would be nice if it was something that was continual, if it was successful, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's worth it for us. Ah. We think, you know, we're losing parking spaces. We're building a building in one of our parking lots right now. So, and, and presumably parking is going to be, you know, come tough in the cove again after a while. And, um, you know, it gives people an incentive to do it. So it, it helps us. So, but we need Emma. I see you back. Is there? Oh, excellent. She's trying to connect to audio. There she is. Yeah. Uh -oh. Hi, Emma. Can you? There you are. Yeah. Oh, are. I can hear you. Yes. Ah, oh, great. I can see you too. So we just chatted about the uh, incentives for um, park and ride, and we all like the idea. So we can just keep on. Okay, I was going to say, sorry about that. My laptop stopped working. I don't know why. I'm on my phone right now. Okay. Um, I was going to say TransLink is, is very keen on, on funding park and ride incentives, um, except this year, COVID, um, that was one of the first things they cut. And it's still not for certain if they'll have it next year. If they do, I think we should pursue it. If not, then maybe we'll just drop it for next year as well. Okay, sure. So can you share your screen again with your phone or is that uh, an, a layer of complexity that... Uh, no, I don't. I don't have the work plan on my phone. All right, it's on page twelve of ninety-seven. Yeah, I can share it if it's. We're all looking at the same thing. Yeah, why don't you throw it up, Steph? Right. It's two. It's all on one. It's the twenty twenty. I think we were pretty well through it, but uh, mm -hmm. just want to make sure we're all comfortable with all the pieces. I mean. There are only two big ones, and that is the multi-use path, and then the uh, uh, the Miller Road work. Mm -hmm. Sorry, where are we? Um, so I think the only other budget item was for regional partnerships B three. Right. It, it was five hundred dollars, and that was really meant, um, you know, to host something, yeah. uh, which I really don't think we will do <laughs> with COVID. Um, but I also put in the budget in case we want to put together some sort of materials or some other sort of engagement that might have some expense attached to it. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Um, but any, any other, you know, back to you, Eli, any other comments and questions? Uh, not from me. Anybody else? 
I have a question about the speed management. Mm -hmm. That's $2,000 for that. Did I miss something what that includes? Yes, so moving forward, the speed management um, will have a budget of $2,000 every year. And that is to accommodate any potential traffic calming requests that we get from the community. Okay, that's what I understood. Now, uh, how does one go about making a request? Do you have to have a certain number of people coming together from a neighborhood, going to a council meeting to say, we want this, or will there be some sort of very simple way to apply for this in your neighborhood? Yeah, so we were just discussing this, uh, well, Patrick and I, <laughs> the staff level, and based on all the research I've had, the most common way that municipalities allow initiation of traffic calming requests is through a neighborhood petition with at least 50% of the affected residents in support of having traffic okay. calming. That isn't, um, it isn't necessarily feasible for Bowen because our neighborhoods are so spread out. Uh, I mean, we'll have some streets where there are like, like a block of houses, but then we'll have some where it's just one house. Right. On yeah, higher. exactly. So you can't use an overall number for every part of Bowen. Exactly. So we right. were thinking more so, um, and also how do you determine the affected area? Uh, whereas in the city, they usually go by blocks. We don't have defined blocks. Right. Okay. Um, so we have decided that we would go with, um, five residents coming okay. together um, to, to apply for this request, or 50% of the um, subject area. Um, that being said, it'll be the lower of the number. So if say the subject area only affected two people, <laughs> then 50% would be one person. Um, but otherwise, if there, there are a bunch of houses on the street, then we're looking for at least five people in support. Okay. And the, and the traffic calming, the method to traffic calming would be looked at and a suitable one would be found for that particular street. Yes. And then it would go ahead. It would still depend on quite a number of things. So this is what I was um, trying to uh, give you an update on earlier. And I will send out the draft before I bring it to council for introduction. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks. What is the implication of the school plan incorporation into the work plan? Is that for 2022 or? 2021. 2021. So is there a, the first attachment says council asked us to incorporate the recommendations into the work plan and then which items, are there action items with budget from the, School transportation plan? Yeah, it's the wayfinding one. The wayfinding one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was just a bit fuzzy on that. Yeah. And and Emma, I read somewhere in your little note about wayfinding, which I thought would be a pretty nice idea. I, I really like it when you're on trails in a place where you don't know, and it says you know 2.2 kilometers to such and such, and and I could see that might be useful in in some of our our trails so that people would know mm -hmm. how far I'm going to go. I think that might be a useful little arrows and direction signs with, with my uh, kilometerage mm -hmm. on it. Um, yeah. That would all fit within that little budget that you had. I forget what it is now, a couple of thousand bucks, I think. Okay, so I think I need to clarify here. Um, the multi-use path had a wayfinding strategy completed by Rethink uh, over a year ago. And that was part of a project that was funded by TransLink and specific to the multi-use path. So that one was completed. And part of that was also the pavement art that you see in front of Bix there. Yep. Um, that project is just for the multi-use path, it's completed. That's the multi-use path wayfinding project was to, was to improve wayfinding for trails in general across the island. And so that's why I put in the comment that TAC may want to consider recommending that parks, trails and greenways look at a wayfinding strategy for all the trails across the island. Yeah, I think that's I, okay. So we could, that's something that could come out of our meeting. Um, mm -hmm. I guess for the school recommendation though, I mean, Parks is interested in, you know, hiking all, all around the island. And, and, and that's quite different from kids wanting to know 
how to get to school and back and feel comfort, comfy about the trails. In other words, they're not going to be, you know, crossing Mount Gardner. They're, they're going to be going shorter distances in, in mm -hmm. adjacent to the school. And it's, mm -hmm. so it's, it's sort of a different kind of thing. Um, I think it would fall under the same wayfinding system. Um, the system should account for destinations close and far, um, and, and it should be a consistent visual signage. Um, the multi-use path wayfinding strategy would easily be applicable to the whole island. Okay. Um, it just needs to be a little bit more comprehensive to accommodate different types of trails. Um, so, I mean, we, I think we have a good starting point. If we do want to recommend parks to look at it, it, it shouldn't be, um, it's a good place to start to build on. Okay, okay, thanks. Is that in the parks plan? Are you finding Emma, do you know? I think, I think there is mention of wayfinding in the parks plan. Okay. Uh, at least Bonnie's okay. asked me about it before. <laughs> So will, will you need to do this as an action item yearly or is this a one, like I, I've come back to this table on the um, first attachment that clearly answers my question um, with the SDP action being linked essentially, essentially to topics we've already had in the transportation plan. Um, is this a one-time action for you just to com connect these dots and no, I, I think we would continue to look at the school travel plan every year until I, I guess it's not relevant. <laughs> but um, there's a lot of things that are long term and I'm, I'm sure we will continue to try and complete all of those actions. Okay. Anybody else have any comments? Questions? Nope. Um, well, so I guess there's two things. Oh, yeah, two things that we can do then. So um, I don't know if it's particular order or not, but we can start since I'm looking at the page with uh, us recommending that uh, Parks, Trails and Greenways Advisory Committee consider similar guidelines to the um, wayfinding I've said consider wayfinding guidelines for the Bowen okay. Trail Network. Okay, perfect. So everybody. So um, did you, I think you moved that. Sounds like you moved it. Did I move it? Okay, great. Everybody <laughs> four? <laughs> well, no, we'd say, I'll second it. Seconder. I'll second it, sorry. <laughs> no, it's too late. I don't know why my brain's not working. It's seven o'clock at night. I can't, my brain's not working. Um, so all four. I Everybody did that already. Uh, opposed? Nobody? Okay, perfect. Carried. And then the other thing is um, recommendation that the Transportation Advisory Committee uh, recommend that Council approve the 2021 Transportation Work Plan. I say as received at its October 6th meeting. Okay. Okay. I have a seconder. I'll do that again. Happy to do it. It's my... Perfect. And all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Nobody? Carried? Yay. Yay. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> um, that's Everyone that. Everyone was really excited about talking about the ferry at seven. <laughs> I know, I know, I got carried away. Well, I think um, if we're talking about the updates there about that, um, what my takeaway from it is, uh, I mean, and I'm willing to do this, is just post it on Facebook or whatever with a, a screenshot of that feedback tab and just get people to um, do that. If for everybody else that may not uh, know what we're talking about, the way that the schedule is now on the BC Ferries website is not very uh, well received, <laughs> not very um, easy to read or work with. So um, if the best route um, that Tyler has said is to click on the feedback um, little button on the side of the page and give your feedback. And hopefully they will listen to us. 
<laughs> well, presumably as some other people are unhappy as well. Yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, I saw Melanie today at soccer and she was saying that um, it has been quite, people have been quite loud about that, so. Okay, so I guess that would be an action item and you were gonna take that on? Yeah, I'll do that. That's great, thank you. And then, yeah, cause it doesn't need to be through, you know, municipality or anything. I'll just put it through. Yeah. So, and um, I think that that's that. I think so. That's it. Um, next meeting, who knows, some point in time. So you're going to council with this B report, Emma, on October 28th? That's the plan. That's the plan, okay. And I'll, I'll try and get it out uh, for comment from TAC before. Okay, so we'll just doodle for a meeting if we need one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. Do we, do we not want to just make some sort of rate like this works? Okay. Do you want us to want we leave in the calendar? I mean, Emma can Emma might have something for us outside of or coming out of the council meeting. So the next calendared DIMTAC is on November third, Tuesday. That works for me. I mean, even if it was every second month, I find it very um, hard to jump back into it when we wait three, four, five months, whatever it is. <laughs> And then we have a bunch of issues uh, to discuss. It's yep. it's much harder to get back um, up to speed with what's going on. Yeah, and I've got yeah we've got that sitting in, uh, sitting in my calendar anyway. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean I'm fine with that. Yeah, me too. I think. Let me see. So 7 p.m. Yep. Tuesday. Make sure I, I oh is that that's election day. Oh, wow, that's an exciting meeting in the US of A. Um, yeah, and I'll make sure I hide all the phones in my house as well. <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, everybody, take care. And we'll see you on the third. Okay. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.